flush in person, one of my favorite people, and I don't say that a lot. I really don't say that a lot. I believe you. I'm not just saying it because you were here, David Koechner. Uh, you are in Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, which is in theaters starting tomorrow, Friday, October 30th, here on The Rich Eisen Show in person. Good to see you, sir. Always a pleasure. Now, you you were in this chair that I'm currently sitting in. Last time I like, was right here. Like, right around this time last year. Yeah, it was December. Yeah, it was first some, week, yeah. yeah, right around that. Yeah, yeah. We put on a dynamic show, didn't we, guys? Oh, that was great. Oh, yeah. yeah. You dressed Killer. up as rich, though. Yeah. You dressed up, you had the blue tie. People what? didn't know, I, so I pinned over the tie on purpose. Yes. But some people didn't get the joke, like, that guy's tie is just askew the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, and, and now, but now that you're here in that seat, right. is, is it, which, which seat were you more, are you more comfortable in this one or that I, one? You know, you equal, it's pretty equal. Yeah? Yeah. You're comfortable in either? Well, that one is probably more comfortable than, than the one I'm I don't know. That one's, you get a lot of power up there. I like yeah, that. Yeah, they, they raise it up. They, no, I just don't do this. From that, from that from seat. The, from the seat? You are the chairman of the board. I have, well, I have a chair. Yeah. And I have a board. I don't Some, know if there's anything with that. Someone told me the other day yeah. the meaning of chairman of the board. And that is? In the old days, the old days, you would have, uh, you'd tip over a box or something and put a board on it, mm -hmm. and the wealthiest guy in the room would get to sit on a chair. So he's the chairman of, of the, the board. board. Everybody else had to squat and eat. And and then Sinatra comes along, and then yeah. it just changes everything. Cut to Frank, boom, yeah. chairman of the board. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and, and now not necessarily a great story. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of like a filler or something. So th this whole zombie apocalypse. Yes, that uh, it hits a scouting community because well, that that's sort it, of yeah. been a, that's sort of been a, a, a hole in the whole zombie genre. You're looking like, right. what have, what have, oh my goodness, we gotta get some scouts in there. Yeah. It's about three high school boys. Yes. I'm the scout leader. We're trying to recruit people. The boys wanna leave. I don't know it. They go ahead and go camping, just three of them. Yes. And they're, two of them are sneaking back to town and they come upon a zombie apocalypse. So that's all going on. But at the core of this movie, and I'm not, I'm not joking, it's yeah. really about friendship and growth. Ah. And two boys want to grow on, uh, you know, grow up. Mm. One boy wants to Peter Pan it and stay a kid. Right. And then they, they only through their friendship can they come together yes. and, and defeat the zombies, but using practical scouts' guides. <laughs> Had they not been scouts, they might not have been able to so defeat there's, the zombies. So there's still, there's still some parameters to scouting within this zombie Oh, apocalypse. yeah, yeah, you get a practical use, okay. you get a friendship, they're yes. boobies. <laughs> there are boobies. <laughs> so, boys, this one's for you. And girls, there's some some love. Sure. Okay. So it's for it's for everybody. It's really for everybody. It's a it's an R-rated movie. Uh, so okay. I mean, you keep that in mind. It's in time for Halloween, also. Just in time. Well, it's a perfect compliment to Halloween because it's become such a fun holiday. Yes. And this truly is a really fun movie. Fantastic. It's N a gas. Now, Rich. so how did you how did you prepare for the role of a zombie? The zombie. You know David. what? They have a guy on the set who teaches you your character's personality as they go from live to undead. No, there, there is there really? Yes, Mark Steger. And he was the only other guy on the set that was my age, so I appreciated that. So <laughs> he and I would just hang out and talk. Right. But he was a performance artist who did, um, who, would, who was a naked performance artist in San Francisco and then toured the world. And so he, you'd be naked, he did his really physical thing. And my wife and I went to a screening the other night and I introduced him. She goes, so do you have pictures of when you were performing naked? I'm yes. like, honey, really? <laughs> Well, I mean, if you are a naked performing artist, you right. have to prepare yourself to be asked such a direct question. I guess. But he said after about a minute of the performance, which would go on for however long, he says, you yeah. know, you, people tend to forget about the penis. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how he responded? Pronounced That's it? That's just how I say it. It's more of a Latin. Okay. Us, as, um. <laughs> Pinus, so you pinis, forgot about the pinus. Pinum. Okay. That sounds, that, that sounds like a very Sasha Baron Cohen way of maybe saying it too, right? I love it, man. That's funny. Yeah. Coming in a theater near you, Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. Go see it just to see what a naked performing artist teaches David Koechner about how to go from de Live. undead to dead? Yes. Okay. And then my character keeps getting hurt. Or, so or alive was... to undead. Yes, live to undead. Okay. And That's... my character keeps getting hurt, so that... That had to figure in every every new scene too. But how does somebody who's undead get hurt? That's it's interesting. That's another one of the gags, yeah. one of the fun <laughs> gags in the mm -hmm. film. Mm -hmm. Now there is a, a gag that mm -hmm. does involve an extended mm -hmm. penis. That is the most memorable <laughs> scene of the movie. <laughs> By the way, if I haven't teased this thing enough. Well, I think that's the new name of my fantasy team is Extended Penus. Okay. That's the name of, it's two and five. I gotta do something to shake ah. things up.
Yeah. Are you into the fantasy football? I am. I, I'm in a, in, a, in, a, in a group with my, with my relatives, my, my nephew and mm -hmm. uh, some in-laws. Okay. They're fine. And uh, my brothers and my two brothers are in it too. So. Did you hear Jeb Bush at the in the GOP last night saying that he's he's playing Ryan Tannehill in his fantasy? He says he's seven and zero in his fantasy. Really? Yeah, that came up for some reason in the uh, in the debate. Wow. He was asked a flat out fantasy football question. You got to do whatever you can yeah. to he's to seven bond and 0. with. So what are you? What, what's your record? I right am now? not doing well. <laughs> <laughs> I think Smile. I think yeah. I might be. Uh, are you zero and seven? Are no, you no, no, no. I think I'm okay. one and six. So I keep getting beat. So are you? You're you're a, 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 I guess a game worse than the actual can the, the, the actual team that you. We root are for. on a tear, and <laughs> and I tell you, with a lot of great stuff to build on, and uh, there's nothing that's going to set a fire under a team like playing in a foreign country. Mm -hmm. And so we've got a lot of great stuff happening for the Chiefs this week. Yeah. And there's another Kansas team, Kansas City team, uh, that's doing quite oh, well. Oh, oh, oh. Let's take a break before we get to Let's that. Let's break it. But before we do that, what would you tell the Brits? Because we are on the NFL Now app. People are watching us internationally right now on mobile devices. Oh. If the Brits are unfamiliar with Andy Reid and the style of Kansas City Chiefs play, David Koechner, who better to be the ambassador of the Kansas City Chiefs to let them know what to expect than you? What would you tell them? I, I would say grab some ribs and chips mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and root for the Chiefs. What style of play are they going to see? What are they going to see? Uh, they're going to see some smash mouth football <laughs> with an invigorated running game with the Kansas City Chiefs. We got a, a double threat in that backfield. Both those guys are, are, are dynamic yeah. and fast, fantastic. Yeah. I think our, our, uh, our wideouts are going to be healthy this week. I like week. it. I like it. Yeah. it. A fellow named Chuck Kendrick is running yeah. the ball for them right now. And hit, that kid's hot, isn't that's he? One, that's one guy. That kid's got some, some passion. That's a Char and a Kendrick all rolled into one. Yeah, and he'll mix it up with you. I like it. The Brits now know what's coming. Come on, Brits. When we come back in 60 ticks of the clock, I've got David Keckner here to talk about the Royals. And, uh, and we'll take maybe a phone call for David Keckner here wow. on the Rich Eisen Show. 844-204-RICH. Call in in a moment. Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse in theaters near you starting tomorrow with David Koechner, who you can also catch in Salt Lake City doing stand-up November 5th through the 7th at the 50 West Club. Stand-up is just, there's nothing, there's nothing like that. It's, I've it's tried fun. it in my, my, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. Well, ever. you should keep doing it. I think no, you'd God. be good at it. I'm a corporate stooge now. I can't do that oh. sort of stuff. Well. You know, I can't be working blue, you know. You don't have to. Don't have to. Look at Brian Regan's one of the, the best comics out there, and right. he doesn't work blue. So, you don't have to. You do. You you command this desk. Thank you. And this audience, yes. and you don't go blue. And they go blue. I'm about to. You guys have a delay. Uh oh. <laughs> we do actually have a delay. Should you I ever? Think the stage manager's like, oh. <laughs> Just Why get on the he... phone. Get on the phone. Let's call. Let's call the uh, command control. I won't go deeper than Pinus. But do. But do you do you work blue usually or no? I have a few f bombs in the in my in my okay. act. Okay. Uh, I hope not too many. Okay. I'd say you know it's about an R-rated show. Okay. Because there's enough, but it's not so salacious that you'd go, yikes. Okay. Yeah, because people, I think, when they come to comedy clubs, I have done shows before where, where middle-aged women would come and go, I thought he's going to be dirtier. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people come out and they want a little rough and tumble. Yes. They want to go, like, let's go to the edge of the night with Keckner. Yes, right. <laughs> Take me deep. That might be the name of your show, The Edge of the Night with Keckner. I like good. that. And they're like, is this going to be a soap opera? Yeah, I love it. I like it. Your buddy Rudd. Uh, your fellow Kansas City friend and your fellow Anchorman co-star, he was at these games in Kansas City last Both couple of nights. Yep. I think Riggle was there last night. Was he really? Big Rig. Yeah. yeah. And That's what do you? Th this is once in a lifetime stuff. It seems like. Because last it. year, you know, it, you were on the edges, and Madison Bumgarner took care of you. Wow. He was so but good. But it seems like you may have the better team this time How around. About it. Those guys. It doesn't matter where the ball is. It doesn't. Oh, you want to throw a sinker? Uh, that's mine. Yeah. Slider, mine. Uh, they don't miss. They, they're not missing. It's pretty amazing. I, it was such a joyful show last night. Show. Yeah. It was a show. Mm -hmm. Unless you're a Met fan, I Unless guess. you're a Met fan. Boy, they'd, they'd zoom in on those fans and they'd be like, mm, mm. why'd we travel? <laughs> they put us all up here. Right. I shouldn't be wearing orange. Right. Maybe it's a Halloween it thing. It does for stick them. out, too. Yeah. You know, the orange and the sea of blue. But, I mean, the K is just lit up right now. It was really fun. So growing up, who was your guy? Was George Brett your guy growing of up? Of course. Essentially? Yeah. Of course. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I was, let's see, I was just I was uh, just out of college in 85. Mm -hmm. And so that was so much fun because it was St. Louis, too. You got the freeway series, which how often does that happen? I know. Right? It hasn't happened since. Yeah. You know. We had that opportunity 
this time. It seemed, and last year might have happened too, but Bumgarner took care of everybody. Yeah. You yeah. know, he took care of, uh, he was he was settling all family business. Yeah. So do you rockets. think, so what do you think? Is it in six, seven? Do you sweep them? What do you do? What do you do? <sighs> Boy, is a sweep, you know, a sweep is not as much fun, but it is for the fan in a way, right? But well, you, it wouldn't be fun for Fox. They want this thing to keep going. Right. And really, if there's anything we want is them to <laughs> the monetize things more. <laughs> Let's push it deeper. Let's, yeah, I know. let's make sure it's 40 degrees when we're playing the World Series. Yeah. Wherever it is. Uh, do it for Rupert is, I think, the cry that they're doing right now. Do it, do do it, it for Rupert. Do it for Rupert. And his Win one ideas. for Rupert. Well, I, what, what's your thoughts on that? Do you like, you like to see a little balance, a little drama in the series? Because if you sweep them, does it mean, oh, we were so dominant? Or does that kind of also inform us that, ah, uh, there really wasn't that competition? No, no, no. no. If, at this point in time, whatever you get, you're, you deserve, you've earned. Yeah. You, we've reached that. We've reached that status right now. I think, I think a sweep in, indicates we're going to be there next year. Right. In a way. Well, that definitely. Well, all I know is this. I, I am a Yankee fan. And the Yankees won three in a row, and then were a strike or an out away from winning four in a row. And I, we'll never see that again. We will never, ever Is see that. Is right? that right? Yeah. I, will, I don't think we'll ever see that again. I mean, although the Royals have made it in back-to-back -back World Series right now. But they are, they are that good. I've got David Koechner here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, can you, we, we did this for the television audience, okay. and we're going to unpack it for you and the radio audience. There, there is a, an election for the president of FIFA that mm -hmm. is set up in February. That's a soccer organization. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, Sepp Blatter is no longer going to be supposedly in the running for this. Right. Thing. What we are going to show you All right. are five, correct? We have five candidates for the, for the role right here? Five. Five candidates. One, e either one of them is fake uh -huh. or all of them is real. Okay. I wonder how many are women. Okay. We, we have said <laughs> zero. <laughs> what, we, what a strange we have, thing. We, 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 for, tell, for the radio audience, what we're going to do is put up their photograph, we're going to put up their name, their country of origin, and their level of corruption. Okay. Okay. Here we go. It's so strange. Uh, first that one up a for business. File it away. Okay. Jerome Champagne. All right. He's from France, and his corruption level is bladder light. Okay. So file that one away. Okay. He's either real, or one of these are fake, or they're all real. Musa Billity. He's from Liberia. And his corruption level is Bond villain. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay. Next one is Gianni Infantino. He's from Italy and or Switzerland. And his corruption level is strip, strip club bouncer. <laughs> All he, right. All right. Sheikh Salman bin <laughs> Ibrahim Al Khalifa. He's from Bahrain. I just want to put a whiz in there. Okay. That's right. He, he could be. <laughs> nobody beats the whiz. Uh, his, wiz, wiz Khalifa. His but corruption yes. level is breathtaking even by golf standards. Wow. Think about that. And then the last candidate, Tokyo Sex Whale. Come on. From South Africa, <laughs> and his corruption level is mining tycoon level of corruption. Wow. That's... So you now must choose which one is fake or all of them are actual real live candidates for they, the FIFA presidency. There's next something February. fake about every one of them. Everyone has a joke to it. Um, the last one, sex, what is it? Se Tokyo Sex Whale. What was, uh, now, you know that Jonathan... you, your porn star name is the street you grew up on, not your country you're from, and right. your pet. So I don't know if there's right. such a thing as a sex whale or Tokyo <laughs> Street I'm Morgan in South Jan Africa. I, I'm Morgan Jangle, by the way. Oh, is that what you are? Uh -huh. I'm, 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 I'm Harold Hudson. <laughs> that's true. Double H coming in, <laughs> P-Noosa popping. <laughs> so I think, the, who is the president of, is it Liberia? His name is Jonathan. I don't know. It's you good, got, you're, good, you're good definitely night asking or something the wrong like product. that. It's almost a Bond villain name. Should have asked Tapper that when he was here last time. Old JT. That's right. Yeah, so he's you get to choose either, either one of them is fake or all of them is real. Okay, so they all seem fake. Hmm? One's real or they're all fake. Either or one of real. them is fake. Or they're all real. Or they're all real. Then I guess they're all real because they all seem fake. You are correct. They're no all No way. Real. Every last one of them. Tokyo sex whale. That is true. <laughs> Isn't that great? It is great. Should you, you should file that one away and just use that for one of your next scripts, one of your next, you know. Quick, get, get Tokyo sex whale on the phone. It sounds like that's the cologne from, uh, from Anchorman. You're right, sex panther. <laughs> right. Add it's a, a Tokyo to sex panther, that's and now you've got an international business. Works every time. That's ridiculous. Works every time. FIFA, man.
Wow. There you have it. Can't believe they didn't have a woman nominated at all. They don't. And like you said, the, the, the level think, of corruption. You'd think that an organization that puts the uh, Women's World Cup on artificial turf to let them all just rip up their knees willy-nilly, you'd think that they would have some form of more care, like, self-awareness, yeah. right? Because, yeah, th well, the thing is, if you've got a woman in charge, there's less risk of a sex scandal, darn yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want, to, you want to ask the poll question of our guest? Do you want to do that? I'd love to hear a poll, the poll question. Let's do it. Let's do it. There are four films that Chris Law, throughout the, the uh, life of this show, has admitted he has not seen. The latest one from yesterday's show has been uh, 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 breathtaking. He has not seen Trading Places. He has not seen Princess Bride. He has not seen The Running Man. And he's not seen Blazing Saddles, which is the most egregious black hole in his <laughs> movie viewing good, repertoire. Ooh. Did you uh, notice that every person has bit made that face or, or reaction when they see that you haven't known these? And by the way, when, when, we're, when you're, we're done chatting here on the show and you have a minute, you can look at his DVD collection that's in the behind him. He has it here. Is that Because e his wife has basically kicked it out of the house. Okay. You should see the dumbass movies that he has actually seen. <laughs> so, so and the, these are the ones that he has not seen. So number one, it's embarrassing of the, the, the movies he hasn't seen. Correct. But even more embarrassing are the movies he owns. Yes. That... There are some classics in there. I, I... Yes. Stand down. Basically, Stand basically, down. basically, it's the Tokyo sex whale of this situation. And by the way, Chris, that's not an argument. There are some classics in there. It's not a really formulated <laughs> argument. <laughs> he has, he's full of those yeah. unformulated arguments. Uh, I think Blazing Saddles yeah. is the most egregious. I mean, that's just, that's 101. Oh, that's... you don't like comedy. Oh, come on. You don't? No, I, I, these, look, as I told our previous guest, Jared Allen, some get through the goalie every now and again, and these ones have slipped through. Mm -hmm. I think Saddle's 41%. That's leading the leading poll. Leading the poll today. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, bad boys that's the too. most egregious. Uh, for Slim Pickens alone, I can't say oh, what he says. You need a, blo in a the blank movie. load of dimes? Well, yeah, you gotta go back and get a blank load of you dimes. You guys ain't nothing but a bunch uh, of Kansas yeah. City. You can't finish can't the thing. Finish it. <laughs> but at the time, it was, a, it was a joke, and now now we understand, you know. Slim Pickens. Slim Pickens That's rode right. the bomb down in... in uh, and uh, Dr. Strange. Thank you. Yeah. And also Alex Karras playing Mongo. Right. Detroit Lions, great. Yeah. With the candy gram from Mongo. All of it's great. Yeah, the bean scene. Great. Oh, the, uh, the beans are, yeah. Come on, what's, the most embar what's the movie that you're most embarrassed about that you haven't seen? Is that I haven't one? seen? Like, is uh, there a classic that you That I have seen? not seen. Well, Chris, I think I've seen them all. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, man is in something called Scout's Guide to Zombie Apocalypse. Are you going to see that one? Of course. Of course. Yeah. I want to know, how long are you in the makeup chair for that? Because once you Four get zombified, hours. that looks pretty rough. Four mm -hmm. hours in the makeup uh, wow. to get the makeup on, and then one hour to take it off. What do you, wow. in the, what do, you do? Do you read something, or do you, you're we, on your uh, phone? What do you do Watch movies, for? listen to podcasts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Have great, rich wow. conversations like the Rich Geisen Show. <laughs> 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 no, we listen to, watch movies, watch stand-up specials, uh, you yeah. know, podcasts. Everybody kind of gets a pick. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So that, and that, that's why he has no blind spot that's in his filmography. No blind spots. Okay. Well, it's called Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse in a theater near you tomorrow. David Keckner can also be seen at the 50 West Club in Salt Lake City, November 5th through the 7th. Thank you for coming on, sir. Hey, baby. You bet. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.